Well, hello, everybody. It was good to be with uh, a bunch of you earlier this week at our workshop here at church under construction, where we went through our church's uh, vision statement to love, grow, serve together as one. We talked about ministry opportunities. Love to talk to some of you even a little bit more about that. We could use some help uh, in Fusion, our youth ministry. We could use some help in our children's ministry. You could see Manda crass about that, but we'd love to have you keep taking steps in. It was just really encouraging, uh, nonetheless, to to see a hundred or so folks there, many of whom are serving in various capacities in our church and others who are hoping to. Hope you're part of that as well. Uh, this past Sunday, we talked uh, about, or Rick talked about exactly, or Rick talked about, excuse me, uh, the idea of making plans uh, and, and using what Solomon writes in Proverbs about our tendency to make plans. The irony is I'm a person who uh, plans often. Right now, I'm working through plans for our youth group year, trying to get teams together to serve us meals, trying to put uh, leaders uh, in, in teams and, and who they're going to work with in the year ahead, what age level of students and those types of things. I'm planning out what lessons we'll do. Uh, right now, we're in the middle of uh, carrying out final details of wedding plans this weekend for our son, Colin, who will be wearing another one of our church family uh, kids, Aubrey Anderson. We're super excited about that. And we, they and we have been planning for this day for many, many months now. And so we look forward to celebrating that together on Saturday, this Saturday. Um, so I'll miss you on Sunday as our family is is down for the wedding. But Planning is just something that I'm doing often, that I think about often, and maybe you can relate. Maybe there's things in your life. Maybe you, you're a planner. You like to plan a vacation or, or plan for the week ahead or plan for the year ahead. You plan your financial uh, things out for a month, a month at a time. There's lots of ways in which we plan, and yet we need to consider some of what Solomon writes. He he talks about making, he warns about making sure that we're not planning things that are outside of the Lord's will for our life, or or planning things which we think are right, and the Lord may not agree with that. So a couple of verses that I want to share with you that stood out to me from chapter 16, where Rick took us through, and, and that are just great one-line proverbs for us to remember. And they're kind of, they run together. He says in, in chapter 16, verse 3, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your, plan, your plans. That tells us something, right? That we need to commit to the Lord first, and, and he will make our plans work out the way that they're supposed to. And then in verse 9, he says, In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. And I just want to take a, a little side detour to connect this in a personal way, something that, that happened with me just this summer. As I mentioned, our son Colin is, is getting married this weekend, and, and yet he graduated college just a couple of months ago in May. And of course, as a parent, we want, we hope for that right job for our son, for him to utilize uh, the schooling that he, that he did and, and think about his future ahead, take care of his his spouse and, and family one day, what will set the course for that? And so we've been thinking about that for these years of college, but it's magnified as he graduates. And so we prayed and watched and he had interview after interview. And, and I prayed, Lord, would this be the job? Is this the one? Please help him to get a job before he gets married so he can be settled and, and start the job and, and get a good paying job or do something that he loves. All those things and we're thinking about, praying about, hoping that it just happens before the wedding and everything is all set and it's a perfectly laid out plan that, that we might have. And so we prayed and, and the job's offers weren't coming in. And so he he stayed home with us this summer and he worked locally doing jobs that he did as a kid uh, in all his college and high school years. And and he kept going. And, and then would you know, of course, a, a few weeks ago, Colin got the job offer. And it was 
perfectly in God's timing. At least now we know that the Lord was directing the steps all the way along, leading him to be able to stay home with us for the summer and, and do some things to bond as, with his brothers, brother and sisters and uh, with friends locally, uh, stay home, save money, all those components of it that weren't against our plan, but but if it were up to me, I would have had him get that job right away after graduation. He would have been moving forward. And, and here God gave us a perfect gift of his perfect timing from the get-go. He knew what was best for Colin to, to be home and to, to be prepared for the wedding, to save up some money and, and all the other things that he was able to do uh, this summer and now get married and then shortly after, he'll be starting in that job that he got. And so uh, the Lord knows our plans or what's best for us. He, he will establish your plans if we will let him, if we will commit to the Lord, whatever we do. That's a story from our life, a story that I share with you. And I, I hope that, that you see in your own life the places that God has done that and is doing it, and that, that you would trust the Lord to establish your steps. So as you plan, which we all have to do, make sure that the Lord is the one that is guiding the way, and he will not let you down like he has proven again to the Quaid family. So, hope you have a great weekend without us. We hope to be having a great weekend with our family and, and, and extended family and friends and all the others that, that will be there. I will see you guys in a week or two. But until then, again, let the Lord direct your steps.